Welcome to the video. So today we're going to take a look at how to do the Proscal Wallace test on SPSS. So we will use this test when we have an independent variable that is comprised of at least three levels. And we might use this instead of the ANOVA if we find that one of the assumptions of the ANOVA is violated. For example, if we find out that our data are not normally distributed, we might use the Kruska Wallace test instead of the ANOVA. Um, so for this, for this video, I'm going to pretend that we've run an experiment on how quickly people complete a race in the water when they're either swimming, paddleboarding, or windsurfing. So in this, in this hypothetical experiment, we've got 30 people, we've got 10 in the swimming condition, 10 in the paddleboarding condition and 10 in the windsurfing condition. And we basically asked them to complete a race and then we've measured their, their time in minutes. So let's go to uh, SPSS and see how we could tell, tell the program what our individual variables were. So let's use the top cell here to indicate or to describe the independent variable. So I'll just enter condition here because that's a sensible name for the independent variable. And then I'll go to values and I'll use this box here to indicate what the individual levels of the independent variable were. So I'll use a one here to stand for swimming. I'll use a two to stand for paddleboarding. And finally, I'll use a three to stand for windsurfing. So once I've got those added, I'll click OK. I'll then go over to the measures column and I'll indicate that this independent variable is nominal, which is just another way of saying it's categorical, um, which basically just means that it's comprised of different groups or conditions or levels. And then once we've described the independent variable, we can, do, we can describe the dependent variable. So I'll just go to the cell below condition and then I'll enter time because in this, example we're interested in how quickly people complete a race and then finally i'll just use the the measures column to indicate that the dependent variable was scale variable once i've done that i can go to data view and you can see that condition and time have appeared at the top of these two columns and then i'll just enter a, a series of ones here in particular i'll enter 10 because that's how many people I had in the swimming condition, I'll enter 10 twos because that's how many people were in the paddleboarding condition. And then finally, I'll enter 10 threes because that's how many people were in the windsurfing condition. Um, one trick is if you find that your conditions don't show up in these boxes when you enter the numbers, just check that this value, value labels option is ticked. And that will ensure that for example, when I enter a one here, it shows up as swimming rather than just a number one. So once I've got the independent variable set up, I can just copy and paste my data from the Excel file. So that's the swimming data. So I'll just put that next to the swimming participants. Then I'll do the same thing for the paddleboarding participants. And then finally, I'll do the same thing for the windsurfing condition. And that's the file all set up. So we're now ready to run the analysis. So we can go up to analyze. Then as this is a non-parametric test, we can go down to non-parametric tests, then across to legacy dialogues, then down to K independent samples. Then we just need to transfer the independent variable to the grouping variable box and the dependent variable across to the test variable list. Next, we can just click on the independent variable and then on define range. And then I'll just use the numbers that I used to describe the individual levels of the independent variable. So the lowest number I used was a one, because I used that to represent swimming. And the highest number I used was a three, because I used that to represent windsurfing. So once I've done that, I'll click continue, then I'll just go to okay. And so often the most interesting thing when we do an, an analysis on SPSS is the SIG value or the p-value. 
So let's take a look at that. We can see that's 0 0.000 in this case. So we know that the, the p value or the sig value in this case is below 0 0.05. And that just means that we can conclude that there was a significant effect of condition on the race times. As well as the p value or the sig value, we will want to report this value in the Kruskal Wallace row, as well as the degrees of freedom value. Uh, in some versions of SPSS, it doesn't say Kruskal Wallace here, but it says chi squared, but it's the same thing. So if you can see chi squared here instead of Kruskal Wallace, don't worry about it. Um, in addition to these three values, it's good to report the medians. The medians aren't generated automatically when you run the Kruskal Wallace test, so we need to do that separately. So we'll go up to analyze, down to compare means, then across two means. Then we'll transfer the independent variable to the independent variable box for the independent, independent list box. Uh, and we'll transfer the dependent variable across to the dependent list. Next, we go to options. We are not interested in any of these statistics for the moment, so we'll just transfer those from the left to the right. But we do want to have median, so we'll transfer that from the left to the right. Then click continue and then OK. Um, and you can just see that that will generate the medians for you. So I can see that the median time in the swimming condition was 6.5 minutes, the median time in the paddleboarding condition was 5 minutes, and the median time in the windsurfing condition was 3 minutes. So now we've generated the output, let's take a look at how to actually report those results. So we can just start by saying what test we did. So we did a cross scale Wallace test. And this revealed a statistically significant difference in race times across the three conditions. Then I've just entered a chi-squared value here. And the number associated with that, that symbol is the uh, 21.45. And so that comes from this Kruskal Wallace section of the table. So I've just rounded this number from three decimal places to two decimal places. And the other numbers in the sentence are the two, so that's the degrees of freedom, which is here. And the other number in the sentence is 30. So that's just the number of participants in this case. So that comes from this table up here. And then finally, in the last sentence, I've just described um, the medians and I've said which, which um, conditions were associated with faster times and which uh, conditions were associated with slower times. Uh, so that's really all there is to the Kruskal Wallace test. Um, if you do have a significant result, you could follow up uh, with Man Whitney U tests. So I'll put a link to my video on Man Whitney U tests if you're interested in checking that out. Um, hopefully, this has been helpful. Um, if anything's un unclear or if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And thanks a lot for watching.